performance overview. So this little device is capable of controlling your camera. Now I've reviewed similar devices before that offer ways to trigger or control your camera, but this little device has got a few neat features that I wanna share. It's gonna sit up here in the hot shoe, but it plugs into the remote port on your camera and they provide cords for all popular cameras. And then either through the interface or a Bluetooth connection via your smartphone, capable of triggering the camera. Let me wake my phone up and tap to take a picture. That's what I have it set on right now. Now, that's the simplest, but you can also trigger your camera for time lapses, extreme HDR, so longer than the max 30 seconds you're limited to on manual mode, or you can use its built-in light, sound, and laser sensors to trigger the camera. This is where it's getting cool. Now, the light sensor is capable of detecting and triggering the camera in time to catch a lightning strike. I was hoping to be able to share some hands-on use with you all about this, but the one storm that came through since I've gotten my hands on it just fell apart. No bolts of lightning that I could see, so no bolts of lightning that it could see either. But we can simulate this using a flash. So I'm gonna put it into lightning mode. You can adjust the sensitivity, um, and I've got it now running in lightning mode, and I've just got a flash here. I'm just gonna fire the pilot light on the flash. Pretty nifty. This makes capturing of lightning during the day much easier and even at night when the typical method is those longer shutter speeds and you just kind of hope to capture a bolt of lightning while you have the shutter open um, or you buy a dedicated lightning trigger that costs significantly more. Additional sensors such as motion, distance, temperature, or pressure can be added externally. There's a little accessory port. You can also use this device to trigger a flash. Let's actually take a few moments and share how to get a shot like this or this. So you need a camera. It does not have to be anything special as long as you have manual control. I'm going to be using the Canon T6S with a 50 millimeter lens on it. In the case of water balloons, a slightly longer lens or focal length is helpful as you can keep your camera out of the splash zone. I have them set up much closer right now just so you can see both at the same time. I'll be moving the camera further back. You also need a flash and a way to trigger that flash like this MyOps device that we've been talking about. Now the flash isn't gonna be connected to the camera, so it's helpful if you have a way to easily position your flash. A light stand, a tripod. When you got your flash, it came with one of these little plastic stands. It has a tripod socket at the bottom, or you can pick up one of these cold shoes. It's basically a fancier version of the same thing that also has a little tripod socket at the bottom. Probably most importantly is you need a dark location. Ideally, someplace where you can eliminate all of the ambient or almost all of the ambient light. That's why we're in my basement with cardboard and plastic over most of the windows. We're also in my basement because, well, we're gonna be popping water balloons with darts, which is wet and messy. You could also use a pellet gun with balloons, or you could break eggs, light bulbs, glassware, lots of different ideas. Really, you're limited by your imagination, but all cases, please be careful, use eye protection, and take safety measures to ensure that everyone is involved is safe and you can clean up easily. So let's talk about the setup. You can see here that I've hung a balloon from the ceiling. It's some distance from the background. I'm using an old shower curtain to kind of hide a messy background and block a little bit more light back there. Something even darker would be better, but I don't have that. So we're going with this, and I'm gonna position the flash slightly behind the balloon and I have manually zoomed the flash to narrow the beam of light and avoid lighting the background. I've decided to use two flashes connected wirelessly to better balance the light, but this could be done with just one flash or a flash and a reflector. Again, you wanna ideally keep everything out of the splash zone or danger zone, or if it's close enough that you think it might get wet, cover it with a plastic sandwich bag for simple waterproofing. I also have a tub underneath the balloons to catch the majority of the water. So even though it's my basement, I still wanna keep it relatively dry. With everything in position, we want to frame, focus, and set the camera exposure. I'm choosing to shoot pretty tight, but you do wanna leave enough room to capture sprays, splashes, and debris. So consider gravity. This might take some trial and error to get your framing right, but remember it's easy to crop later, so start a little bit wider. Focus the camera, make sure your depth of field is adequate to capture all of the action. Your shutter speed should be one to four seconds. This gives you enough time to trigger the camera and pop the balloon. I'm using a one second shutter with a two second timer. 
I've framed the balloon pretty tight so I can stand very close and I don't need much time to throw the dart and I've got less chance of missing this way. Now you want to turn off all the lights in the room and take a photo with the flash or flashes off. The resulting image should be completely black. This is good. It means no ambient light is being captured which would result in some ghosting. If you can see the balloon or the background, you want to black out more of the light or you can stop your aperture down a little bit or lower your ISO. Once you have a black image, you're ready to work with the flashes. Flashes on or flash, doesn't matter if you're using one or more. Manual setting and lower power is usually plenty. Also, the lower power, the faster or shorter the duration, which further helps to freeze the action. Remember, it's the flash that's freezing the action, not the shutter speed. I recommend starting around 1 64th power. Plug the trigger into the flash port, turn on the device, and choose that sound setting that's going to work for you. Be careful. In touching the MyOps, that sounds really loud to the device, so it's likely it's going to start setting the flash off right in your face. I speak from some experience, so just watch that. Watch your eyes. Also, if you plan to try this multiple times, you want to make sure you turn your flash sleep function off so it stays awake and it doesn't go to sleep and you think it's awake and you try to pop a balloon and you totally miss it because the flash is asleep. All right, flash is on, camera is on, time for a first non-popping test. This is where we check exposure with the flashes. I like to trigger the camera and then click, which should make the flash fire. Check the image. How does the balloon look? Too bright? Dial the power down a little bit. Dim? Increase the flash power. Repeat this until you've got your desired look. It's important to point out if you're using balloons filled with water, make sure you add a little bit of air so that there's a nice pop sound when it bursts. Otherwise, the sound trigger might not pick that sound up and not fire the flashes. So I've got little balloons and regular balloons. The little water balloons are smaller and will hold enough water to mimic the entire shape of the balloon. The regular balloons can only partially hold water and are gonna give you a much different look. So experiment with what you like best. Now you're ready. I like to clap again and make sure the flash is ready to go. Then trigger the camera, fire the dart, and voila. Let's go back to the rest of the MyOps overview. You also have a way to set up a whole DIY scenario in the DIY section of this little device. Again, either through its simple interface or your Bluetooth. Now, I plan to be out there some more and keep my eye on the weather this summer. I really want to try to capture some nice lightning, especially during the daytime. So follow me on Instagram to see if I am successful at all. But I want you to take a look at the MyOps site. They've got a nice gallery of images. Take a look to get some ideas. And I'd love to hear from, what, from you all of what you would do with a device like this. Leave a comment below with your answer. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.